All right, here we go. Here to talk to you this morning or whatever time you're watching it this evening, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about regression formulas. On the AP test, you're given this awesome sheet with all these formulas. There's three in particular I like to use when it comes to uh, regression. I just want to kind of show you where they come from, all right? Um, initially, this is, a big, this is a big model. This is the form that all your models will be in, which is kind of like the old y equals mx plus b. I'm going to talk about that. Here's your uh, formula for slope, and here's your formula for uh, getting the y-intercept. I'm just going to kind of show you where those things come from. So let's start with the big guy. This is the guy that we have to get all of our models to kind of look like. So think back um, when you were, you know, Algebra 1, and, and you know, remember in Algebra 1, like, when am I ever going to use this? Well, actually, this is, here's an example of when you're going to use what you learned in Algebra 1. You're going to create a model, make predictions, and all this stuff, find residuals. It's going to be fun. So here's the first formula, ready? Here we go. This guy is simply derived from our old friend y equals mx plus b. You remember this formula when you were younger, y equals slope x plus intercept. But the interesting thing about this formula is if I was going to give you an equation to plot, what would you do? So for, for instance, if I gave you this problem, plot the line y equals one-half x minus two. Well, I know it would, exactly what you do. Most likely you'd say, all right, let me look at the Cartesian plane. I'm going to go down to the y-intercept, put a dot there, and then I'm going to put in a slope of one-half, which is not, four, it's like not quite around here. So it's going to go over two, up one, and it's going to go here, one-half. And there's my line. So the first thing you actually did was you went right to the y-intercept. And then from there, because that gives you the location, you're like, well, now where do I put this line? Well, this is exactly what we do as uh, statisticians. We say, since we start there, let's just see where we start. So they, it's reversed. Instead of, um, instead of writing it like this, it's written in order that it's actually what, what, what you do when you graph it. You say, all right, we start here, and then we change by this much. So it gives you an initial starting point, and then you change by this much. And this is exactly how you graph it. So it's nice in this order because it says here's where the y intercepts, and here's where it goes. And, here, and this is the way it's changing. So start here and change by this much. It gives you it's a little bit different way to look at it, but that's how we write it. And to help you remember which is which, it's written like this y equals b not, with a little o there, and you can think of it like this, b old, like the old b, we used to, the old b was the y-intercept, so this b is the old b, this is the y-intercept, plus b1, now we're calling m b1x, so b1 now is your slope, it's how much, um, for every increase in one unit in x, how much y is changing for each increase of one unit of x. So it tells you, this b1 says, if I move over one unit in the x direction, how far up or down I'm going to go. That's what the slope tells you, okay? So remember, this equation is y equals intercept plus slope x. All right, that's what it means. All right, next. Um, so we, now you understand, hopefully, uh, just a little bit, little twist on something you already knew. Uh, this is the formula for slope. The slope of the line, I discussed it um, in a previous video, is simply r times the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of x. Let me explain what that is. Remember, uh, when you're doing regression, you have a bunch of ordered pairs, meaning a bunch of x, y values, things that are tied up together, like you know, diameter of the tree, height of the tree, like diameter of the tree trunk, height of the tree trunk, then diameter of another tree, and that tree's height, diameter of another tree, and that tree's height. So they're pairs, they go together. Look at me! But if you look at those pairs, remember what you have is you have an X list, and you have a Y list. You know, your X is your explanatory variable, explanatory, explanatory, and your Y responds to it. Why? I don't know, but it responds. Um, 
It's the, it's, it's the response variable. Um, and you have all of these things. So the, the, I have a, it's, it's a one foot diameter. It's 75 feet tall. It's a, it's a 0.4 foot diameter. It's 37 feet tall. And I have all these X's and all of these Y's. Well, this X, all of the X's have a mean, and we call it X bar. It's the average of this list. So if you have the list of all the X values, you get an X bar as the average of all these. If you want to run one bar stats on all the X's. And you can also get a standard deviation of all the X values and average distance to the mean. Cool. And the Y's have an average. We call that Y bar. Cool. And the Y's also have an average distance to the average Y, and that's called SY. And then we use this stuff. Remember, we transform everything to Z-scores, and we find the R value. R. So what it means is, when we take a look at what the slope is saying, the slope simply says, for every standard deviation, remember it's rise over run, the slope says on your scatter plot, for every one standard deviation I go over in the x direction, I'm not going to go up an entire standard deviation in the y direction. I'm going to go up less. I'm actually going to go up only r standard deviations in the y direction. So if your standard deviation, if your r is uh, you know 0.8, you're going to go over one standard deviation in the x direction and only up 0.8 of a standard deviation, only 80% of a standard deviation. If your R is 0.75 or 3 quarters, you go over one whole standard deviation this way and only 3 quarters of a standard deviation in the other way. So you notice what ends up happening is, is when you stand at our favorite balancing point, you know the point that's on the line there, our buddy X bar, Y bar, and if you go over and you predict one standard deviation above the mean in the x direction, so a z-score of 1, your prediction, your predicted y, is not going to be a whole standard deviation above in the y direction. It's only going to be r, so r of standard deviations. So if r is 0.75, you're going to go over to a z-score of 1, and your y, your predicted y, is only going to have a z-score of 0.75. Okay? Because you're only going to go up R standard deviations. Okay, So you go over one standard deviation in the X direction, you go up R standard deviations in the Y direction. If you go over one, two standard deviations in the X direction, you're going to go R, R standard deviations. So if you're going to predict, one, you're going to make a prediction for a value that's one standard deviation above the mean in the X directions, its prediction is only going to be 0.75. Standard deviations above the mean in the y direction. If you take a point that's two standard deviations above the mean in the x direction, the predicted y is only going to be 0.75 plus 0.75, only one and a half standard deviations. So if I go one, two full standard deviations, I'm only going to go up 0 0.75, 0 0.75, or one point, I'm 1.5 standard deviation. So a z score of 2, of an x value as a z-score of 2, is going to correspond with a predicted y value with a z-score of 1.5. So basically what it's saying is for every standard deviation you go this way, you go up our standard deviations. All right? So that's the other formula. Now, uh, hopefully, I didn't take too long to, uh, to explain that. Now the last one is this guy right here. And this is our old friend. I, I know you've seen this one before. Remember back way back when you were a little guy or a little girl, you were in your algebra class and they were like, given a point and a slope, write the equation for the line. And you were like, oh, okay. Well, given a point, I don't know, how about the point two, three? And the slope, uh, how about a slope of five? I don't know. Write the equation of the line. Oh, how do I do that? Well, this, remember? Well, let's write it in y equals mx plus b form. Right? I'm going to do it. Oh, I've got my m, right? Here's my m. So, y equals 5x plus I don't have my intercept. How am I going to find it? Remember what you did? You say, well, I'm just looking for this b. 
So what do I do? Well, I've got an X. I've got a Y. Sweet, I put my X and my Y there, I can find my B. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Watch, ready? Little magic. I put my X in. There. I put my Y in here. 3 equals 5 times. Wait. X, Y for 2 plus B. Subtract my 5 times 2 for both sides. Minus 5 times 2. Minus 5 times 2. And I get my B is equal to 3 minus 5 times 2. And if I rewrite it this way, I get my intercept is, can you see this? 3 minus 5 times 2. Hmm. Which is, my intercept was, see what the 3 is? My Y value minus 5, my slope, times 2, which was my X value. Does that at all look kind of like this? Yeah. It says the intercept is simply the Y value minus slope times intercept. I'm sorry, the Y value minus slope times X value. So if you're trying to find the Y intercept, it's just a y, some Y value. If you have some point on the line, you put it here, and you, can, and, and you put the slope there, and you can find the intercept. So generally, when you're going to use these formulas, you're given summary statistics of the bivariate data, meaning you're given the standard deviation of the x, the standard deviation of the y, the r value. You use that to find your slope, b1. But they also give you the mean x, average x, and average y. So you can have this. Notice we had a point in the slope. Now, in, this is all algebraic here. Uh, you can, they give you a point, x bar, y bar, and they also give you a slope, b1, after you plug this stuff in. So they're asking you to find the equation of the line, but in order to find the equation of the line, you're going to get stuck right where you got here. Well, let me write the equation. Here we go. Um, y equals m x plus, I don't have the intercept. I need to find it. And the exact same thing is going to happen. You need to plug in, and we know the intercept here is B old. I have a B1. I'm going to put my X in the X, X bar, my Y in here that I'm given, Y bar. And I'm going to rearrange this by subtracting B1X on both sides, minus B1X, minus B1X. Same thing I did over here. And when I do that, I end up with Y bar, average Y minus B1X equals B0. So, B0 is simply I forgot to make the bar there. So, because you're given the summary statistics, again, you're given a point and a slope. So you're just gonna you do the same thing you did in algebra one. Just manipulate it. And that's what what's nice is the formula they give you in the formula sheet is they're gonna give you this information generally. You're going to have the summary statistics, and they're going to give you, and you're going to make sure before you go and build a model that it's straight enough. So it has to say that the residuals plot is random-ish, or it's straight enough. But they're going to give you all this stuff. They're going to say, well, x bar equals this, sx equals this, y bar equals this, sy equals this, r equals this. And you're going to use all of this information to write the equation. Well, here's the equation you're going to write. You can write it out just like this. You just need something here and something here. Well, how do you find B1? Use this formula. Take your R, SY, and SX and put it in here and get your B1. Check. Then how do you find your B0? Use this formula. Use your Y bar, X bar, and then the B1 you just got from that formula, and then you've got your B0. Put it in there. Check. And then you've got your model. Okay. Make sure you put the hat for the predicted. Hopefully that helps you understand where these formulas came from. Good luck.